Praise, Praise the Lord. Good morning. Turn it around by faith. Ministries, family, good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to another virtual worship service of Turn It Around by Faith Ministries. I am your pastor, Donnie Lynch, and we welcome you in the blessed name of Jesus this morning. As the song, uh, as the psalmist said, Jesus will. He'll fight your battles. Yes, he will fight our battles. The Word of God teaches us the battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. So I thank God for everyone who's joined in this morning, praying and believing God that there's a word from the Lord for you this morning that will bless you as you continue to walk with Him, as you continue to seek to glorify Him in the life in which you're living. Amen. So this is the day that the Lord has made. And we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So good morning, everyone, once again. And I thank God to everyone this morning. I pray that you're well. I pray that you're walking in the blessings of God. To those that have been going through a season of affliction, I pray that you are in a season of restoration. Amen. The Lord is restoring you. Amen. Even now. Amen. He's even right now healing. Amen. He's delivering right now in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for your presence in our lives. We thank you right now for the promises that we can receive according to your word. Amen. This is a blessed day of the Lord. Amen. I want to thank everybody, amen, who has been praying for me and continue to pray for me. Amen. Pray for uh, the first lady of this ministry. We continue to strive to be what the Lord would have us to be in this time and in this season, in these latter days in which we live. Amen. That the glory of God may be revealed in each one of our lives on this morning. Amen. I want to draw your attention this morning, if we can, through the gospel according to St. Matthew, the gospel according to St. Matthew, as we come into this season where we're, we're moving toward the day where uh, the body of Christ celebrates the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, it is this month that we come into the season of Christmas, the time of honoring the gift of God that was given to the world. Amen. That men who might believe on him might be saved and have eternal life. Amen. This is that joyous season. This is that time, amen, of joy and and expectancy in the body of Christ and in the world as a whole. Amen. That's the goodness of the Lord. He said he rains his blessings on the just as well as the unjust. God bless you. It is good to see, amen, that Mother uh, Bertha is with us on this morning. Mother Wills, we thank you. Amen. All the way from Charlotte, we want to thank God for Sister uh, Trina Bacot. Amen. You're with us this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. To all the blessed saints of God that are with us this morning. Amen. Our ministry has been under attack. Amen. The enemy has attacked the ministry uh, uh, just these past uh, couple of weeks. Try to afflict our bodies, amen, with sickness and try to disable us and keep us, amen, from moving forward in the things of God. But we just thank God. We come to know that God is a healer. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, even in the midst of what we're going through. Amen. The Lord is still good to us. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to give him glory this morning. Somebody ought to just say thank you, Lord, for being the God of of our salvation. Amen. So in the gospel according to St. Matthew, I want to ask you to join me this morning. Amen. In the 11th chapter, the 11th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew. And there we receive, amen, uh, the word of the Lord for today. Amen. Continue to pray, amen, for one another. Continue to pray for one another. Good morning, sister Sister Thompson, Sister Tina Thompson, we thank God for you joining us this morning. Amen. That's one thing about this virtual uh, uh, media. Amen. It is able, even though I can't see you physically, because of the uh, technology that is there, I'm able to recognize you as you come aboard. Sister Darlene, God bless you. Sister Valerie, amen. Our own Minister Kim Brown, amen. God bless you. Uh, First Lady, amen. We thank God for you. She's not in the particular area where I am, so I have to recognize her too. Amen. Amen. So, as I said, just continue to pray for one another. Sister Alexandria, amen. We just thank God for everyone, amen, who is joining us on this morning. Amen. There, in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 11, the word of God reads, amen. 
Now it came to pass, when Jesus finished commanding his twelve disciples, that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the work of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things that you hear and see, the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, amen, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft garments are in the king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, and I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom is written, Behold, I will send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Amen. We want to focus in this morning on uh, on chapter 2, I mean on verse 2 of that 11th chapter. And it says, And when John heard uh, in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we seek another? Amen. I want to preach to you from this morning. I pray that you will will uh, allow and the Holy Spirit will empower from this thought. When things aren't going the way you plan. When things aren't going the way you plan. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. As we look at this particular scripture right now, uh, I, I, my mind and my spirit goes right now to each individual who is under the sound of my voice. Amen. Because even though we're connected, amen, through uh, technology, I don't know what each individual is going through right now. I'm talking about at this very moment. Amen. The things that you have encountered maybe over the week or the things, amen, that you have had to deal with even as you rose this morning by the power of God. Amen. Because we are all believers in Christ. Amen. And in doing so, we have looked into his word and seen the promises of God concerning our relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. And many of them are so blessed. Many of them are so excited. Many of them give us great hope and expectancy. But what happens when you have begun to walk a walk in the Lord and you have set things in place and you have begun to trust God and things don't necessarily go the way you think that they should? Amen. Amen. You know that you are seeking in your heart. You know that you are walking in your spirit. Amen. You know that your soul is committed to serving the Lord. But yet it seems that trouble and, and tragedy, amen, and adversity come your way. You have been a faithful, amen, servant of the Lord. As the Bible says, each one of us is working out our own soul salvation in fear and trembling. Neither one of us can live this Christian life for anyone else. But we come together corporately to honor God, but individually we must serve God for ourselves. Amen. Amen. So here we are presented in the 11th chapter, uh, this, this, this dilemma that John finds himself in. First, we must understand about John. John is the forerunner of Christ. He was sent by God. He was ordained of God to come into this world to prepare the way for the coming Messiah. He was the one who was declared the word of God to bring men and women to repentance, amen, and into relationship with God, amen. John, the Bible tells us he was baptizing there at the river Jordan, and even the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees, they came to the river to be baptized of John. And John declared unto them, who has warned you to flee, amen, the destruction that is about to come? Amen. He said, bring ye therefore fruits 
of repentance. In other words, let your life be an example that you have truly come to know the Lord, that you have truly come to repent of your ungodliness, of your sinful ways. Amen. So John being bold in the Holy Ghost, that was the thing about John. John was bold in the power of the Holy Ghost. And what has now caused John to be in prison is that John actually, amen, he confronted Herod, who was at the time was the leader, amen, there in Jerusalem. And at this event that Herod had and John the Baptist has shown up for John, John was greatly, amen, respected and revered among the people as he went about sharing the word of God, amen. And yet, even Herod understood that the people received and recognized John as a prophet of God. But then John, amen, uh, uh, came into the event where Herod was, and there he saw Herod, who had his brother's wife. Remember what the scripture said? He had his brother's wife. In other words, this woman was still married to John's brother while she was involved intimately, amen, even to the point of sexually with, John, with Herod, amen. So John confronted them and he said, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And this kind of did something to Herod, but to show the ungodliness, the boldness of the enemy, amen, even in the, the, the life of the woman, Amen. There was a party that was being held. Amen. And the woman knew that, that Herod, amen, being full of lust and ungodliness, amen, was, was, was one who was led away by the flesh. So she didn't conspire with her young daughter, amen, to dance this seductive dance in front of Herod. And she told and instructed her daughter, when he asks you what it is that he can give you, Amen. You tell him that you want the head of John the Baptist. Amen. So as this, this her daughter, Salome, danced before uh, Herod in this gathering of all his friends and all of the people and all of the dignitaries, the Bible says that, that Herod was moved with the seductiveness of her dance and the movement of her body. Amen. And when he was so taken by her that he said to her, uh, uh, tell me what it is that you desire. I will give you even to the half of my kingdom. And then uh, uh, the, the woman's daughter told Herod, said, I desire the head of John the Baptist on a silver platter. And Herod was shaken because he knew he even himself considered John a prophet. And that, the, women, that the, the people of the city and the people round about considered this man, John, as a great prophet of God. But yet, because of his pride, because of his ego, and because of those around him, he was not going to back down from this promise because it would have made him look bad in front of all those that were around him. Yet, the only one that was behind this was the devilish in the woman, amen, who wanted to stay with Herod, amen, in this adulterous, ungodly situation. So here we find now John the Baptist. He's in prison awaiting, amen, not knowing his fate, not knowing what was going on, but yet can you imagine him sitting in that prison, having been used of God, amen, to, to carry forth the word of God. Can you imagine this man of God, amen, being uh, in prison and, and doing the work of God, filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. This, this is why we must understand, beloved, that even though we are saved, even though we are filled with the Spirit of God, the Bible teaches us there is no temptation, there is no trial, there is no situation that comes upon you and I that is not common to every other man. Jesus said that while we are in this world, we will have trials and tribulations. That's why many times we experience sickness. That's why many times we experience economic problems. That's why many times we experience even relationship and emotional problems. Because we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Amen? So here, 
Imagine yourself. Just imagine now that you have been serving the Lord with all that you have. Amen. And yet now you find yourself, amen, confined to these prison walls. Amen. You find yourself not free to move around. Amen. To move in the midst of your friends and your loved ones and to do the work of the Lord that he has called you to do. But you must understand the Bible teaches us he that has begun a good work in you is able to perform it. He's able to bring it to completion according to his will. So no matter what we're going through, no matter what trials and tribulations, what pains and suffering many times that we go through, understand that the Lord is always with us. But John had a question there in prison. He was probably questioning himself even before he sent his disciples out to Jesus. Why am I going through this? Why am I experiencing this? I have walked with God. I have been obedient to God. I have done those things that the Lord would have me to do. And yet now, simply because of my declaration of the word of God, I find myself in a situation at this moment that I did not desire to be in. So here John, as Jesus goes about teaching and preaching in the cities, it says, and when John heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of those who had followed him up to that time. They were John's disciples. They walked and, and, they, and they, they followed him and they learned from him and said to, and say to him, are you the coming one. Now, if your Bible is written as my Bible is, and it should be, you see that the words coming one are in capital letters. The reason that coming one is in capital letters is because God, in the, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, as men penned this, wanted us to understand that this was a unique individual that John was talking about. This person that John was talking about Amen. Could not be identified with any other person in this particular persona that he is presenting. He is the coming one. In other words, are you the one that we have heard from the prophets and have been spoken in the word of God and has been breathed by the Holy Spirit, that you are the one, the Messiah, the one that will come and deliver Israel and deliver your people? You Are you the one? who will come and reconcile God's creation back to God the Father. Are you the coming one? Or shall we look for another? Very legitimate question. John has been serving the Lord. As you read scripture and you see how John is flowing and, and moving in the things of God, we can see in scripture the testimony of how John is serving God. But yet he finds himself in this dire situation. I want to ask you right now. To those who are believers right now. You've been trusting God. You are trying with all that you are empowered to do. You are striving to put daily on the whole armor of God. That you might stand against the wiles of the devil. And yet it seems that there are things in this life that are still coming against you. Oh, yes, even when you are walking in your joy, when you are walking in your blessing, when for that moment and for that season, things are going well, then all of a sudden, because of your walk with the Lord, it does not always have to come from people. It can come from circumstances themselves. You can be driving down the highway, Amen. And all of a sudden, amen, and there's an accident in front of you that you cannot avoid. And you find yourself involved in that accident. You find yourself injured and you find yourself hurt. Amen. You were not on your way out to try to do anything. Amen. But it seems like these things came upon you. Amen. And so, at that moment, what Satan is trying to do, he is trying to get you to doubt who the Lord is in our life. Hallelujah. He's trying to get us to turn from the promises that God has given to us through Jesus Christ. Don't think that these things that are come upon you, they come upon you, amen, to, to, to make you joyous. They come upon you, the Bible says, Jesus said, concerning the, the, uh, the devil. He comes but to kill, to steal, and to destroy but Jesus said, I come that you might have life 
and have life more abundantly. So here, as John is in prison, it does not look like an abundant life, does it? It does not look like the joy of the Lord is evident in his life, does it? But yet, he is still, even in prison, he is still seeking the promise of God. No matter what we're going through, we can look to the promises of God. Amen. That song that was sang so many years ago in the body of Christ still holds true today. He may not come when we want him, but when he comes, he is always on time. Amen. Don't look at your current situation if you're in the midst of, of a season right now of trial. If you're in the midst of a season of tribulation. God already knows his thoughts toward you and I. He already knows the end that he had determined that he will bring you and I to. Amen. But we're going to have to go through some things. We're going to have to experience some things. Amen. In order to walk. Amen. In the glorious promises of God. Amen. The Apostle Paul, amen, in writing to the church at Rome, he knew, that he knew that they would experience this. So there in chapter 12 of the book of Romans, Paul says, we have a responsibility toward God. We have, a, we have something that we must give to God. Amen. So that God can work his glory in us. It says, I beseech you, brethren, there in chapter 12 and verse 1, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable. That word reasonable means the least thing that you can do is offer up your body to Christ. That's why it was so important for us to come together in fellowship. That's why it's so important for us to physically come together. Amen. Being in a building does not save you. But being in a building shows that in your mind and in your heart, you have committed, amen, to walk, amen, in the commandments of God, where he says in Hebrews chapter 10, around verse 25, forsake not the assembling of yourselves one with another, which has become the custom or the practice of some. Amen. So we, we should not forsake it. Even right now, as we come together virtually, we are now coming together in fellowship. No, it is not physical. We're praying once again that we can come together physically together. For there's something about when all God's people get together. It's something about when all God's people are together praising God and glorifying God and receiving the instruction from the Word of God. Then Paul says in verse 2 of chapter 12, he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, that you may prove, amen, when you trans have your mind transformed, nobody has to do it for you. You are the one that will prove the acceptable will of God in your life and in my life, amen. All we have to do is present ourselves a living sacrifice unto God. So here, here, amen, here we see John having presented his body to the Lord, a living sacrifice. Amen. He didn't wait, amen, to be like it was in the Old Testament uh, uh, practice, amen, where they bought the the, 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 uh, the oxen and the sheep and the lambs, amen, before the Lord, amen, and they sacrificed them. Those, those animals were alive before they were sacrificed. They were a living sacrifice, amen. Their blood was shed, amen, amen, to perform and fulfill the covenant that that God had made, amen, with his prophets, amen. So here we see, amen, that John is walking as a living sacrifice. We see as he spreads the word of God, amen, as he uh, speaks the word of God into the life, amen, of those around him. He is a living sacrifice. He's not being conformed to the world that's around him, but he has been transformed by the word of God that is in him because of the Holy Spirit abiding in. That's why you and I need to study to show ourselves the proof. That's why we need to read this Bible, amen, so that when we begin to walk in this world, the thing that comes back to us, that directs us, amen, how to walk in the world Word of God, how to walk in the will of God. The Holy Spirit will bring the Word of God back to our remembrance. John asked, and you're asking as you're going through this time in your life, Lord, why am I going through this? Why am I experiencing this? 
But look at John. Look at John. He sends his disciples and, and he and something powerful is said in that portion of scripture. He simply sends them to ask Jesus, are you the coming one? But look at the hope in John. Or do we look for another? In other words, John says, I know he's coming. God promised it. I know he's coming. I don't know really, amen, uh, if you're the one now because of the situation I'm in, but are you the one? Or shall we look for another? John understands this. The promises of God are yes. God is faithful. John understands. John knows it. So even if at this moment, if, if the enemy is trying to bring doubt concerning who Jesus is, he knows that the promises of God will not fail, no matter what we're experiencing in life. I know sometimes, amen, we go through pain, we go through suffering, we go through sickness, we go through heartbreak, we go through disappointment, amen, we go through discouragement. Oh, you just name it. We go through the D's, <laughs> amen, we go through the E's, amen, we go go through the P's, we go through all of the letters, amen, but we need to stay in the F's, the faithful, faith, hallelujah, we need to stay in the things of God in our life, so here, the word of God says, when they came to Jesus, Jesus receiving John's disciples, so here's what I want you to tell John. Go and tell John these things which you hear and see. The blind see. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Jesus, look, this is something and an example, and, and this is a charge to you and I. One of the problems that is existing too much in the world in which we live today, people aren't seeing the power of God. And before you start thinking about the, the, the healing and the, the, the raising the dead, amen, they're not seeing those who simply have a witness for the Lord. Those who simply are standing up and declaring the goodness of God in our own life. See, before we start walking in all of the spiritual gifts, before we want all of the, the outward gifts that, that people so desire, I want to lay hands on the sick and the sick will be healed. I want to, you know, I want to go into the hospital room, amen, and pray for those and get see people get up out of their bed before you can even get to that point. You need to be a witness for Jesus. Somebody needs to know that you know the Lord. Somebody needs to know that you have a testimony. Amen. Of when I was going down, when I was depressed, when I was at the point of suicide. Amen. When I didn't have two dimes to rub together. Amen. When it seemed like my marriage was falling apart. When it seemed like the doctor was giving me a bad report. And yet I called on the Lord. I could call no one else. But I called on the name of Jesus. Amen. And because I called on the name of Jesus. Jesus. There was no other name I could call on. There was nobody else I could turn to. Amen. I knew my family loved me. I knew they cared about me. But what I was going through, nobody could fix this but Jesus. And as you, as you began to glorify him and let people see that you have a confidence in the risen Savior, then God then God will begin to, to give his gifts into you. Amen. We put the cart before the horse, as the old people used to say. Amen. But see what uh, uh, the apostle uh, Paul writes again. He says, first of all, present your body a living sacrifice. You be the one to open up your mouth. If nobody else in your household talks about the goodness of Jesus, if nobody else in your household Talked about how God has made a way for you. You be the one. Don't worry if you're going to open up blinded eyes. If the Lord chooses by the Holy Spirit to give you that gift. Remember, it's a gift of God. It's nothing that you can do for yourself. It is always a gift of God. The gifts of healing. The words of wisdom. The words of knowledge. They are gifts of God. So first, Paul says, present your body as a living sacrifice. Start living for the Lord. 
Jesus said, tell John what you see and what you hear. The lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. <laughs> the poor have the gospel preached to them. Jesus made this declaration in the word of God for us to understand. People believe that because of who God is, that no one should go through times of poverty. Jesus said, the poor you're going to have with you always. Why? Because we're in this world. Because evil abides in this world. Evil men are in this world. Everybody was not determined to be rich in the things of this world. But Paul says to the church, I know how to abound. I know how to have. And I know how to be a base. I know how to live when I don't have a lot. But in every situation, I've learned therewith to be content. Whatever the, what the Lord has for me. What does the old psalmist said? Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Can we say that again? Are we really walking in that? Any way you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied. Or we're finding ourselves in a situation like John. John here still has the promise of God in him. He has not given up on the promise of God. And yet, even in this, God is working out his will. Don't you know that in our life, in your life, and in my life, in the life of the believer, even when we go through, God is working out his will? The song we heard a few minutes ago said, God is preparing me for something I can't handle right now. Look at John. God is prepared, had prepared him for this moment. Yes, had prepared him for this moment that he would be in this prison. Jesus said, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Jesus says in the, in the Gospels, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. And because he is the advocate between God and man, because he is seated on the right hand of God and intercedes for us, I don't want to be ashamed of Jesus. Amen. Because when I pray, I pray in his name. I pray by his authority to the Father and it is him who intercedes on my behalf that our prayers might be heard. He says, and as they departed, Jesus began to say to the crowds concerning John. <laughs> now look at this. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, the one who has come to redeem mankind back to God the Father. He says concerning John. When you came out to see John, what did you come to, what did you go into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? Did you go to see somebody is that so easily moved by everything that happens in life? That's why the Bible says we need to be steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain. He said, when you went, to, when you went out to see John, what did you go to see? Were you going out to see some kind of entertainment? Were you going out to see some type of flashy individual? Were you going out to see somebody that would move you, amen, with swelling and charismatic words? Or were you going out to hear the truth? He said, he said did you go out in, or uh, read Shaken by the Wind? Verse number 8 there in, in St. Matthew 11. He said, but what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Did you go out to see somebody, amen, who was decked out in, in, the, in the latest styles, amen, dressing contemporarily, amen, so that he could identify with the world, amen, and the world could say he looks just like us, amen. He says no, because indeed those who wear the soft clothing, those who, because soft clothing was very expensive. When he talked about soft clothing, he was talking about things that were woven and things that were made of silk and all of these expensive, amen, fabrics of that time. He said, these things you will find in king's houses. No, you, John, John wasn't dressed like that. John came by the power of God. John came in the will of God. 
John came in the season that God had appointed. But he said, the Bible said, when he came out of the wilderness, amen, he had on a leather girdle, amen, and he was clothed in camel's hair, and his food was wild locusts and honey. This was not soft clothes. This was not something, amen, that when they stepped out, amen, they would say, oh, look how he's decked out. They did not, he did not brag about the fact that, oh, that my, my shoes cost this much and, and my suit cost this much and was always decked out in gold and everything so that people say, oh, you know that he's of God, amen, because he's prosperous, he's got money, amen. Look at what he's driving, look at what he's riding. That does not determine how you walk in the Lord. If that was so, you would be there with the rest of them not believing that John was this man of God. Jesus said he did not come to you like that. He said, but what did you go out to see? A prophet? He said, yes. I say to you and more than a prophet. What did Jesus mean by that? He was not only a prophet, but John was more than a prophet. A prophet spoke concerning those things that are to come. He, amen. He prophetically spoke, amen, of things that were yet to come. But here, John walked in the power, amen, of what the word of God said. He was there to declare that not only was he to come, but that the promised one was already there. He says, for this is he of whom it is written, behold, I send you my messenger before your faith, who will prepare you uh, the way before you. In other words, he was telling his son, amen, I'm sending a messenger. Not only is he going to tell them that you're coming, he's going to let them know that you're here. See, we live in a time, amen, in this age of the church, in the dispensation of the time of God working through what we call the church, where the Spirit of the living God lives in us. The Holy Spirit doesn't have to come. He abides already in every believer, amen, who receives him. If we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive the Spirit of Christ unto salvation. And then we can be baptized in the Holy Ghost to declare and be a witness for the Lord. Jesus says there in verse 11, Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there shall not have risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Oh my God. Don't you understand the kingdom of heaven, God's kingdom? Amen. It will, you must be forceful. You must be passionate. You must be determined that no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to receive, I'm going to appropriate everything that the Lord has promised to me. But when you begin to decree that, you better already get uh, notice, amen, that the enemy is going to come against you. The Bible says, the apostle Peter speaks to us and said that our adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's how come I don't know where sickness comes upon you. That's how come I don't know where in your loving marriage relationship the enemy begins to spread lies in your head, begins to put things in your mind that don't even exist. Amen. Because he's trying to stir confusion. He knows that you're in a blessed relationship. He knows that your family is blessed. It doesn't matter because you don't have, amen, a, a, a 3,000 square foot home. It doesn't matter because you're not driving uh, with a Mercedes in every area and parking lot. It is not that. It is that the enemy declared to keep your mouth shut concerning the Lord is good to me. Amen. That you can stand up and say Jesus is Lord. That he has saved my soul. Yes, I am bound for heaven. Amen. People don't want to hear that now. Amen. All they want to hear now, they want to know about a God who's going to give them every luxury, every convenience, everything going to make this life a life of ease. But you must understand Amen. The Bible lets us know because we're going to have trial, because we're going to have tribulation, 
uh, Paul writing to Timothy, amen, there in uh, 2 Timothy, he says, yes, and if you live godly in Christ Jesus, you're going to suffer persecution. You're going to go through some things. You might as well expect, amen, some things not to go right in your life because the truth of the matter is, even in the lives of the unsaved, things aren't going right. But you have this precious promise, amen, that because God has begun a good work in you, because God has promised you already, amen, that a place in the kingdom, amen, that when you leave this world, he's promised you that you will abide with him forever. You ought to be rejoicing. He says, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to receive it, Elijah, he is Elijah who has come. He has ears. Let him hear what the, what, uh, uh, he who, he who has ears, let him hear. What is it? What is it that you're dealing with right now? Have you found yourself in a John the Baptist situation? Have you found yourself in a situation, a man, where you're going through right now, where you're experiencing something right now? It may be in any area of your life. And there's not an area in our lives that the enemy cannot touch. Amen. But I'm reminded by the Holy Spirit. Amen. When the servant of God, amen, his name was Job. When the man of God named Job, amen, who, who was honored before the Lord. As Satan came before the Lord and the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? Amen. And, the, and, and, and uh, Satan said, but you have a hedge around him. Amen. And this is the blessing that we must understand in the Lord. Amen. Don't you know you can't leave this world until God says it's time for you and I to go? Amen. Because when Satan wanted to afflict Job so that Job would bring an accusation against the Lord, the Lord says you can touch anything you want in his life, but you cannot touch his life. Don't you know when sickness comes? Don't you know when adversity comes? Don't you know when season of lack comes? Don't you know when emotional problems come? You can't leave. I can't leave until until the Lord says it's our time to leave. We didn't think it would have been like this. But when we have the promises of God, Jesus wanted John to understand, yes, I am the one who promised. I am the coming one. Not only am I the coming one, I am the one who is. I am, as the scripture says, that I am. As we look further on down in scripture, he says, <laughs> once again in verse 11 of chapter 11, Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not been risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and all the law prophesied unto John. And if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who, hear, he who has ears, let him hear. But to what shall I liken this generation? Oh, now, not only was he speaking to that time, but he's speaking even now to the time in which we live. Listen now and watch how the Holy Spirit correlates not only what Jesus is saying now, but later on in the apostles. He said, but what, to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their companions and saying, We played the flute to you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not lament. What does that sound like? If you look, amen, in Second Timothy chapter 3, amen, verse 1, Paul writes to Timothy, and said, in the last days, perilous times would come. Men would be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And this is what is happening even in the time of John the Baptist. The word of God, the promises of God, the gift of God is in their midst. But they don't want to hear it. They don't want to receive it. He said, we played the flute to you. That's what you're like. We're like ones who are playing music. But you don't want to dance because it's not what you want to hear. Uh, uh, we mourn to you. But you don't 
don't see the sadness and you don't see the burden and the hurt that's in us. So you didn't even join in with us, amen, to lament. He says, for John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say, he has a demon. Look at that. Just because he didn't join in the party life. Just because he didn't join in all of what's contemporary now, the lifestyles that are in the world now, what the world is going for right now, the ungodliness that we see in our society right now, the hatred, the bigotry, all of the things, being hungry for the things of this world, the, un, the, the unthankfulness, the unholiness. He said, because you're not like that, because I don't want to listen to the music that you listen to, because I don't want to go in the environments that you go into, because I don't want to say what you say, because I don't want to live the life that you live. Says so something things wrong with him. He has a devil. Oh no, but the problem with John, he was a peculiar person. He was a royal priest. He was called out of God to be different from the world that he was in. Yes, he was in this world. He breathed the air. He drank the water. He ate the food, but he was in this world, but he was not of this world because his spirit and his soul was of another world. That's what is happening to you and I as we go through this thing. Understand, we, we have not come here to stay forever. We are simply strangers passing through. He says, you said concerning John because he didn't do the things that you did. He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say to him, and they say, look, a glutton and a wine bibber. You know what Jesus is telling him? The problem is, no matter what God does for so many people, you're not satisfied. The ways of God are not pleasing to you. So you want to walk in the ways of your enemy, the devil. Amen? And it says, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. What are you experiencing right now? What are you going through right now? Understand that the Lord is still with you. John understood that the Lord was still with him. He knew that no matter the hardships and the pains that he experienced, that the Lord was still with him. I want to tell you something, beloved. As we walk this journey in Christ, just believe. And just trust God for what he has said in his word. We've got to walk this life by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 lets us know that without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who would come to God must first uh, believe that God is. It starts right there. You must first believe that God is. And when you start to believe that God is, the Bible says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It all begins in your mind. The battlefield begins in your mind. And as you take on the mind of Christ and find it not robbery, robbery to be called a child of God, you're going to find that the things that are going on in the world that are not of God, you're going to see them differently than people who do not know the Lord. But we're to walk in compassion. We're to walk in understanding. For Paul said, we too once had our lifestyle in the ways of ungodliness. Understand that these are souls that need to be saved. Understand that these are people that need to be delivered. Understand that these are people that need to be brought to Jesus. Don't hate them. Amen. Hate the ungodly ways that they're walking in. And then walk in the promises of God. Whatever you're going through. I want you this morning. To say Lord. Thank you. For being with me. Thank you O oh Lord. For still making a way for me. Thank you O oh Lord. For being my provider. Jesus. You are the center of my joy. Jesus. You are the strength of my life. Jesus, you are my light in darkness, for you are the light of the world. There may be someone today that's even under the sound of my voice. And you do not know Jesus. 
in the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. You do not know him in that personal, intimate way that would allow you to have victory in this life. That no matter what we go through, once again, as the Apostle Paul says there to the church at Ephesus, and he says in Ephesians chapter 6, put on the whole armor of God. And as you read, and you see all of the accessories that make up the armor of God. And you put them on. Why? That you might stand against the wiles of the devil in the time in which we live. If you are here today, and you do not know Jesus, I invite you to allow Jesus to come into your life. Allow him to become your Lord and your Savior. Amen. That you may be glorified, that he may be glorified in you, and that you may get the victory in life. Father, I thank you. I thank you this morning that no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're experiencing at this moment, Lord, you are with us. That, Lord, your promises are yes and amen in our life. That even, Lord, as we experience trials, we experience tribulations, we experience hurts and pains, thank you, Lord, that your joy is our strength. Thank you, Father that you are the one in the midst of all our sufferings, deep down in our soul, we can say yes and amen, that Lord, you are truly there in the fulfillment of your word, that you are a very present help in the time of our trouble. I thank you, Lord, for keeping these, your people, to this appointed time, now, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, whatever you desire to do in our lives, bless as only you can, provide as only you will, keep as only you are able, that we might show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. I thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. To every believer that's joined with us today, I thank God for your presence on today. Continue to rejoice in the Lord. And remember this once again. He that has begun a good work in you and I, he's able to bring it to completion until the appearing of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest, may he rule, may he abide in your life and mine both now and forever, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember, I love you, but God loves you best.